Okay, so welcome back. This is search engine optimization. So what's your number one goal with SEO? It's gonna be to optimize your blog post for search engines like Google. So basically you get as much traffic to your blog as possible. So let's start off with SEO. SEO stands for search engine optimization, and it's basically the process of optimizing your blog posts so that they can be found really easily and ranked highly in search engines. So let's take a look at what SEO looks like in action. So this is a copy of a Google post. And basically what it is, is I just typed in things to do in Rancho Palos Verdes. And so I got all of these um, little posts here that talks about things to do. So you've probably seen this millions of times every time you do a Google search, but that is SEO in action. Those blog posts were very, very specific as far as how they optimize their blogs. And they didn't come up randomly in the Google searches. They've been optimized to come up in the Google searches. And throughout this course, I'm going to show you how you can do the exact same thing. So when it comes to SEO 101, there's a couple things you got to keep in mind. So Google and other search engines, they like awesome content that's valuable and long form and exhaustive. So of course you can write a couple short blog posts here and there, but for the majority of your blog posts, they should be long form and uh, exhaustive. Okay. So Google also likes people with authority. They like keywords. And they also like people that have a specific niche or focus. And they also love sites that update consistently at least twice a month or once a month. But I would say to shoot uh, safely, I would do the twice a month. And they also love fast loading sites that are mobile first. So the bottom line here is that search engines... A search engine is the ultimate concierge, okay? So what they want to do is they want to recommend only the best content on a fast-loading site that's mobile-friendly. And the reason for that is if they don't, people will just start using a different search engine. So if Google wasn't the best possible provider of answers, people would start using something else. And that's exactly what happened to Yahoo. Yahoo was great, but then when Google rose to the scene, Google was better and everyone switched from Yahoo to Google. So Google is trying to avoid that at all costs. So what they want to do is they want to provide you with the best possible answers. So your blog has to be the best possible answer if you want to show up in a Google search result when someone's searching for a specific keyword. So the other thing is that um, if you, if you, basically the bottom line is if you want to be served up on Google, you have to be creating the best content possible. Okay. So Here's how to get great SEO for your site. So first and foremost, you want to get hyper local. So hyper local is super important for a lot of reasons, but especially when it comes to SEO. So search engines want to recommend content from people who have authority on a specific topic, right? So they are going to look to your site. They're going to look through all of your posts and they're going to see if you know what you're talking about. And if you want to build authority, blog about your geographic farm. And you can also blog about your niche as, as well. So for instance, in this example, if I'm using Palos Verdes as my city and um, horseback riding and horses and all things equestrian are also very popular in Palos Verdes. So I would be writing about my farm, which would be uh, RPV and then Rancho Palos Verdes. And then I would also be blogging about horses. So if that was my niche, if horseback riding was my niche, I would be writing about both of those and then hopefully in tandem together. Okay. So that's how you can start to really, um, hanker down on a lot of the things that are getting extremely hyper local when it comes to a geographic farm and a niche. So how does this work in action? So I typed in Rancho Palos Verdes Equestrian. It's a very simple keyword, but that's what I typed in. And you can see here, the Sanders team and the fabulous South Bay.com. These are both real estate agents and they're both trying to rank for that keyword. So you can do the exact same thing in your market. And if you haven't figured it out already, a lot of real estate agents are starting to do this for this exact reason, because that's a keyword that people are typing into Google and they want to be the go-to source as opposed to like a news um, paper or some other form of content, they want to be the source, okay? Which is 
what should be happening. So when it comes to keywords, when I say long tail keywords, I want to explain exactly what that means. So when it comes to SEO, keywords are king and a long tail keyword is basically just a specific search term that people will type into a search engine. So here's an example of a long tail keyword. So horseback riding lessons in Rancho Palos Verdes, that is considered one long tail keyword. The best way that you want to grow your traffic is to target specific t- keywords that you want to rank for. So you want to rank for horseback riding lessons in Rancho Palos Verdes, then that is the article, the next article, the blog post that I would be writing about, for instance. Okay. So if I wanted to rank for that, I would target a blog post that is specifically targeting that keyword. So you always want to go for long tail keywords, especially in real estate, because if I were to just go through and t- try to target Rancho Palos Verdes or Rancho Palos Verdes or Rancho Palos Verdes homes for sale, Zillow, Trulia, Redfin, Even your broker, they probably have all of those sites, like the whole first page of Google is locked down. So you're not going to be able to compete against Zillow. Zillow's pumping out six blog posts a day. So you're not going to be able to compete against that. So what I would do is I would try to circumvent circumvent Zillow by focusing on long tail keywords like, again, Rancho Palos Verdes horseback riding lessons or horseback riding lessons in Rancho Palos Verdes or hiking trails in Palos Verdes. So those are the types of keywords that I would be using as opposed to homes for sale. There's no way you're going to rank on the first page for that. I just want to be totally upfront with you. It's not going to happen. So you might as well just try to focus on other things. And that's what I would recommend. Zillow can never compete with you if you're getting extremely hyper local. They just can't. They don't have the resources to do that for every single city. So you want, again, go for words that these big sites are not going to target because they don't have the resources to go that granular. Plus they don't know, they don't know the area like you know it. So get hyper local and Zillow can never ever beat you in your own sandbox essentially. So how to find long tail keywords. Now the Google AdWord planner, the keyword planner is where you want to go and it's totally free. You do have to set up an advertising campaign, but you can just pause it and never run it. And so once you have a Google account, you set up your first advertising campaign and you, and you will enter your credit card, but again, you don't ever have to use it. So that's what makes it free. And what you'll do is you'll check out the next video because I'll have a quick tutorial on how to use the keyword tool. Now, when you have your keyword, what do you do next? So let's say you go in your Google uh, keyword planner tool and you're basically like, okay, great, got my keyword, what now? So you have your keyword selected and you'll want to sprinkle it throughout your blog post to boost your post's SEO. So let's talk about where exactly you should be putting all of your keywords. So number one, you want to put it in the title. So try to put the keyword in towards the beginning of the title. Google tends to give a little bit more weight towards the beginning than it does towards the end. So in this example, if I was targeting horseback riding lessons, I would do horseback riding lessons in Palos Verdes so that the horseback riding lessons is um, towards the beginning. And that's how I would do that one. Now, where to put your keyword again? So, okay, we're going to do the title, which is the first few words. Then we're also going to put it in the URL. So the URL is this. It's yoursite.com slash horseback riding dash lessons dash in dash palace dash verdes. So that is the URL, okay? And you can easily change the URL in WordPress. Most agents are running on WordPress sites. And even if you use a big company to do your um your blog, your website and your blog, most of them are running on WordPress as well. So every WordPress site is the same on the back end. So all you do is you just click the edit and then you can edit your permalinks and I've circled that in yellow there. So that's how you do that. Now you're also going to want to put your keyword in your H1 and H2 tags. Now this sounds really complicated, but it's not. So here is a snippet of what that looks like. So again, every WordPress is this WordPress site is the same on the back end. So when you're writing something, you're just going to highlight it 
and then you'll click H2 or H1. So where I have this is a heading, that is an H2 tag. So you're wanting, you're going to want to put your keyword right there in those H2 tags, because what happens is when you tell Google that this is a heading in your blog, Google puts more weight on that because you only, you obviously are going to put the most important things as your heading. So make sure that you use your keyword in a few of your headings. Now you're also going to want to put your keyword several times throughout your blog post, but you want to avoid, it's called keyword stuffing. Okay. So you don't want to just say the same thing 15 different times because Google's kind of caught on to that and they know that you know, that's been a problem in the past. So they're, they're trying to get away from that. So avoid keyword stuffing. You don't have to use the identical keyword phrase throughout your post. So what you can do instead is if your keyword was horseback riding lessons and Ranch Pals Verdes, you could also use horse riding and Ranch Pals Verdes or Ranch Pals Verdes horseback riding lessons. So you can do variations of the keyword so you're not just you know, stuffing that same keyword in 15 different times. It's not a good experience for the user and Google's caught on to that so they may kind of flag your post and then bury it for basically you know trying to game the system. And then we're also going to be talking about the Google Keyword Planner in the next video. So I'll show you exactly what variations to use there because Google will actually just give you the variations. You don't have to make them up. <laughs> so uh, renaming your images. Okay, so this is pretty important. So before you upload your images to your blog post, you're going to want to make sure that the, you rename them with the long tail keyword first. So what tends to happen is your computer will name some your photo like one two three four five six seven eight dot jpeg or whatever it is that's not keyword friendly google doesn't understand what that is so you want to help out the search engines and give them what that picture is about so the best way to do that is to save your images to your computer and then you'll just right click and then rename them so you'll rename them on your computer and then that way when you upload them to your blog Google, when it crawls your site, it can understand, okay, this is a picture about horseback riding in Palos Verdes. Because Google can see the pictures, but it doesn't always equate to what that picture is. So you just want, again, just help it out, SEO your pictures, so that that way people can find them. And what happens is, you know, you've probably done a Google search on uh, for images in Google and your photos will start coming up as those images based on what people have named their images. So if you name your image horseback riding in Rancho Palos Verdes and someone happens to do a image search, you have an opportunity to come up in the image search that way. So you definitely want to rename your images. And you also want to add info in the alt section and in the description section. Okay, so let me show you what this looks like because it's it's not as complicated as it seems. So again, this is the back end of WordPress and all WordPress sites are the same. So what you'll see is the title is of the image is horseback riding lessons, the alt text. Now, this is what Google sees. So you're basically telling Google in the alt section hey, this is a photo about horseback riding lessons. So that's all you're doing. So you want to make sure that your keyword is there. And then you also want to make sure that your keyword is in the description as well. So that way, when Google crawls your site, it knows, oh, hey, this photo is about horseback riding lessons in Ranch Palos Verdes. Cool. So it'll know where to put your post. Okay, so you're definitely going to want to use keyword sec um, your keyword in there as well in that section. So the bottom line here is I don't want you to get kind of bogged down with a lot of the SEO stuff. What I want you to do is I want you to focus on creating awesome content first. So you're probably already doing most of these things without even knowing it if you're creating great content. So don't worry about implementing every little thing just right now when you're just starting out. What I want you to do again is just focus on creating valuable content first and the SEO will naturally follow. You can always go back and SEO all of your, your past blog posts, but I do want you to know what the SEO rules are so that that way you can keep them in mind because I don't want you to blog for fun. We're, we're not doing this for fun. We're, we're definitely doing this for, for business, for leads and sales. So I don't want you to blog about things that people aren't looking for. Um, I do want you to know what types of blogs are going to get you the most traffic. So that's why we're going to, we're covering this because I do want you to know what the rules are so that that way you have a clear understanding and you can always 
implement these things as time goes on. Now, Google loves evergreen content. So you definitely want to make sure that your content is evergreen and evergreen content is basically, it's just timeless. So it doesn't have an expiration date. It's just as useful now as it is a year from now. And let me give you a quick example. So evergreen would be horseback riding in Ranch Palos Verdes, but then something that's not evergreen would be horseback riding lessons in summer 2017 in Rancho Palos Verdes. So you want the majority of your content to be evergreen. So the reason why is because your content will have a super short shelf life and that affects your SEO if it is not as evergreen. And the reason is because Google loves fresh results um, because people have an inherent bias against reading old posts. So I don't know about you, but when I look at posts in Google and I see something from 2014, I'm like, no, thank you. <laughs> so I will move on to something else and I will automatically try to find something that's a little bit more updated. And I'm pretty sure you probably end up doing the same thing. Nobody likes to read outdated information. So just make sure that your posts are evergreen. Now I want you to keep in mind. So your post, when you publish it, it is rarely the most popular at that point. So it could take several months or even a year to get traction after you hit publish. And I know that's super discouraging, but you have to remember SEO takes time. And once your articles reach the top of Google, when they're on the first page, they can stay there indefinitely. So it can just coast along, getting you tons of traffic and tons of leads in the process for free. So you're basically putting in the work now and then you can reap the benefits from here on to kingdom come. Like that's how it's happening. So a lot of the big brokerages and a lot of the um, smaller boutique brokerages, any, any agent that caught on to this a year or two ago is raking in leads now because of the fact that they did this before everybody else figured it out. So you definitely, if you haven't started, you want to go ahead and start now. And all of the agents that I work with who are killing it when it comes to SEO and getting a ton of traffic, this is why. I have agents that just started implementing SEO uh, and, blo and consistent blogging within the last, I would say, a uh, couple months. And they're already getting 500 leads. I mean, 500, um, visitors on traffic every single week consistently. So it does work. You just have to give it a little bit of time. Okay. So keep that in mind. Now let's talk about authority. So the quickest way to build authority is to get other people to link back to your content on their websites. So these are called backlinks. Um, they're also called inbound links and search engines assume that if other people are linking to you, you must be producing great content. So get as many local sites to link back to you as possible. A good example of this would be like other business owners. Um, you can do like community influencers, local newspapers, anybody that's willing to link back to you, you can get backlinks that way. So let's talk about just another way to get backlinks organically. So first and foremost, you have to write great content. No one's going to link back to your stuff if it's not good. So that is the running theme throughout this course is great content. Okay. So that's first and foremost. If you're writing great, great content, valuable things that your community finds useful, people will naturally want to share it on social media. They'll also link back to it on their blog posts. So sometimes what will happen is you'll have a community influencer. Um, it could be like a local food blogger. It could be anyone, there's lots and lots of bloggers that are outside of real estate that blog and they can start linking back to you. And that's typically what happens, especially if your stuff gets shared a lot. Now, the more you post, um, basically the more your post is shared on social media, the more likely you are to get inbound links. So just keep that in mind. When you write great content that gets shared locally, that's when the newspapers will start to pick up on you. Other local, like, like I said, food bloggers, restaurant bloggers. Um, there's a lot of different, you know, um, blog sites of people who are writing about different, uh, things in your area. They'll start linking back to you. And that's a great way to get backlinks to your site. Now, you can also backlink to yourself and you can link to previous posts that you've already written, which is great practice to do. So search engines love sites that are a wealth of knowledge about niche topics. In your case, it's going to be hyper local topics. And so you can show Google that you're knowledgeable about your niche or about your farm by basically linking back to your current, like from your current blog post 
back to a relevant blog post that you've written in the past. So if you wrote a blog post a year ago and you're writing a blog post today and there's a relevant link between the two, link back to it. And this is also helpful for your readers, not just for Google, but your readers, they can see other things that you've written. And so those relevant blog posts, they might be like, you're giving them something else that they can enjoy on your blog. So that's a great practice, not only again for Google, but also for your readers as well. Now you're going to want to add content pretty often and search engines, again, they like sites that are going to provide fresh content. So make sure you post every week. And this is why having a blog on your website is absolutely critical. So your blog gives you something that you can update regularly. So the blog will actually boost the SEO for your entire website. So here's what happens. Sometimes you've probably done this when you Google a restaurant, right? You want to go out and you see there's a new restaurant in town. You want to go ahead and, and try it out. So you'll Google the restaurant and then you'll see the Yelp review comes up first. Their Facebook profile comes up first. Their Foursquare comes up for like all their social media accounts. And you're like, does this West restaurant even have a website? Like do, where can I find the menu? What's going on here? That's why, because the, re- the restaurant has put up a website Maybe they've uploaded a menu and they haven't touched it. So when you blog about your, like when you have a a blog that's attached to your website, you're constantly giving your website updates and that's what Google wants. So if you want to rise to the top of the search engines, when someone puts your name, John Smith realtor or Sally Jones realtor, if you want to rise to the top for that, that keyword, you have to blog. It's, it's not an option. So if you Google yourself and you find that your Facebook page is coming up or your Yelp page is coming up before your website, that's a problem. You always want your website to come up first and blogging is the way to do it. This is so important that if you don't have time to blog regularly, I get it, but you need to hire a quality writer that's going to help you. And yes, it is that important. So if you can hire some, there's a website called Crowd Content. You can actually hire someone to do a 500 word blog post for like 10 bucks, 15 bucks. So you need to absolutely be putting part of your marketing budget towards content. And what you'll do is you'll just, you'll, you'll give the person the keyword, they'll do all of the research, they'll do the write up, and then you just go back in and SEO it and call it a day. That's consider it part of your advertising, okay? Now, the other thing we need to do is is improve your site speed. So always resize your images to fit the content width. Do not upload images that come straight from your camera because they're too big. So basically, I'm also, I've been a web designer, and so people will upload photos right into their WordPress website it'll slow your whole entire site down. So just please, (laughs) please resize your images because you want to have the quickest, fastest website around. Because again, if if your website takes forever to load, Google is going to punish you by burying you because they know that people are just going to click away. So they have data on this. The average person, if your website does not load in under three seconds, the average person has already left. So Google knows this. So if your site is slow, then they're going to punish you by burying you in the search results. That's just a fact. You also want to limit your WordPress plugins. Not only is it a security threat to have more WordPress plugins than you are that are absolutely necessary, because some of the, the WordPress plugins haven't always been written with the best code. And so hackers can get in to your plugins that way. So always make sure that you're limiting the plugins to just the bare necessities. And the other benefit is that some of the plugins are actually slowing your site down. So you definitely want to make sure that you're only using bare necessities for that reason as well. And you're always going to want to keep your website and your plugins updated. So Outdated plugins will slow your website down. And again, outdated plugins are also a security threat. So make sure that you keep everything updated. And also use a trusted web host company. I've used the... I'm just going to keep it real with you. I've used like GoDaddy. I've used Bluehost. I've used HostGator. And yeah, it's great when you're first starting out because it's cheap. But you pay for that. And... You're either going to pay with your money or you're going to pay with your time. And basically when things go wrong 
on your website, they do not have the best help support. They're not the fastest companies around. And I just last week had websites that were hosted on HostGator go down for 10 hours. And that Google, all of the SEO that they had done, they had dropped a couple of rankings because what happened was Google was like, whoa, your site's gone. And then it came back and it's like, that's confusing for the Google algorithm. So you just don't want to chance it. I actually use a company called Word uh, WP Engine and it's expensive, but 100% worth it. It is the best hosting program I've ever been on and I cannot speak highly enough about them. Something happens, they have 24-7 chat, like 24-7 call. I can call anyone at any time. It is amazing. So that's why I use and that's why I recommend. Use clean permalinks. So this sounds really complicated. I promise you it's not, but do not use the default WordPress permalink structure. So here is a um, screenshot of the back end of WordPress. And when you click on settings on the left hand side, there is a little uh, drop down that goes to permalinks. And so the plain one where it says um, honeybarsites.com slash P equals one, two, three. That's how all of the WordPress sites used to be named. And it is ridiculous because Google cannot find, Google doesn't know what P equals one, two, three. They don't know what, they doesn't know what that means. So what you want to do is you want to either do the post name, which is sample dash post, or um, in my case, because I do a lot of Facebook advertising, I've chosen a custom structure. And what I've chosen is the category then the post name. So it may be, um, category might be, uh, homes for sale in Palos Verdes. And then the post name might be, uh, homes with a pool, something like that. Okay. And the reason why I do that is because I want to target certain people who have visited certain areas of the websites that I run. And so that's the only reason why I use the custom structure. But most people, the post name will be fine. But if you want to do some pretty advanced Facebook marketing, then you want to go ahead and maybe do the custom structure. Whatever you do, if your blog is old, do not touch this. So hire someone to redirect all of your links for you. But don't just start clicking around and changing things because what will happen is Google has already indexed your entire site. When you change these things, people will click on the link from Google and it'll be a dead page. So you don't want that. So just make sure if you make any changes here, you're you're doing it with the help of a developer who can help you change all of these links. Um, you also can try an SEO plugin. I personally recommend Yoast SEO and all um, and all in one SEO plugins. I've used both of them and Yoast is the most popular. However, um, I really do like the all-in-one SEO. I used Yoast just because it's, it's the go-to one, but both of them are really great. And so basically what happens is, so here's a a snippet of what the Yoast SEO plugin looks on the back end of your site. So you can actually type in your keywords. So in this case, I did horseback riding lessons in Rancho Palos Verdes. And then what's really cool is that it gives you like the green, orange, and yellow the dots that you see there, the green things are the things that, that have been do, been done right. And then the orange is what needs work. And then the red is like, alert, alert, like fix this right now. So ideally you want to have everything to be green, uh, but you, you won't always do it on, on every single post and that's fine. But that's the goal is to get all of them green. And then that way it'll, it'll tell you what you need to do in order to get more SEO on each of your blog posts. So that is the Yoast one. Um, All-in-one SEO plugin. I believe that that one, I haven't used that one in quite some time, but I believe it's a very, very similar setup on the back end. And I think it's almost a little bit easier to use than the Yoast one. So just FYI. Now, where you might get stuck. So search engine traffic, it takes time. And I want you to really, really take it in that once you start ranking in search engines, though, you will likely stay at the top of the search engine results, which means that you can get traffic and leads for a really long period of time without much effort thereafter. So again, if you had started blogging a year ago, you could be getting thousands of people on your website today easily. So that's what I want you to remember. You do the work now and then you can reap the benefits from it for for indefinitely, a really, really long time. So always be closing. 
What I want you to do is I want you to download the SEO checklist that's listed below and I want you to start referring to it whenever you write a new blog post. So again, if you feel totally overwhelmed and you're just like, oh my gosh, I can't figure this out, you have the SEO checklist. You do not have to do everything right now, but I again, I do want you to have a general really solid understanding of how SEO works so that that way you can start to implement some of these things on your own. So you can always go back and SEO your old blog posts as well and start optimizing them. So for now, if you if you got this down pat, start using the checklist, bang it out every single time, done. Even if you're hiring a writer, perfect. That's great. But still do the SEO checklist every single time because that's what's going to make sure that your website and your blog is constantly up to date with Google. And if you're just starting out, no problem. Start implementing a lot of this stuff slowly. And then once you really get the hang of it, go back to your old blog post and SEO all of those as well. So I will see you in the next lesson.